energy prices are going up and we all need to cut down on our consumption. Akara have just released a smart radiator valve, the E1 model. They sent it over to me. I'll be installing it in this video and integrating it into HomeKit and Home Assistant and the Akara app. But first, let's roll the intro. In the box that Kara sent over, you will find the device itself, a user manual, and some extra connectors depending on which radiator you have. This device is Matter compatible and uses Zigbee 3.0. So you're going to require basically a bridge. This bridge can be an Akara hub if you're using Akara or HomeKit. I have a G2H Pro camera that will act as a hub. Or if you're using Home Assistant, you can use any Zigbee controller that you've got connected up. This device is powered by two AA batteries, which unfortunately is a little bit disappointing. I would have loved to see a rechargeable USB solution. So how can a TRV actually reduce our energy consumption? In simple terms, TRVs allow you to control multiple different zones in your homes and set different temperature levels. So you can have, for example, your bedroom set at 19 degrees and your kitchen at 20 degrees. Obviously with traditional valves, you can only change them manually by rotating to them and you have these numbers, which don't really mean anything in terms of like temperatures. The whole TRV regulates the amount of water that flows into the radiator. So that allows it not to overheat. So you can use like time-based schedules with these smart versions, or you can combine these with your like contact sensors to figure out if your window is open to shut the valve down or motion sensors in general to find out if you're actually at home or not. I previously had a Tado version of this, and if you wanna see that video, I'm gonna link it at the end of this video. So I'm adding more coverage to my home. One is gonna go in the kitchen, and the other one is gonna go in the baby's room. The kitchen is one of the biggest rooms I have in this house, so it will allow me to have some really good savings, particularly when we are cooking, so when the heat is already going up, we can automatically shut down the radiator valves during that time period when we cook. And in terms of the baby room, we're putting it in there because that is fundamentally crucial to have the actual real temperature and to be able to control that independently. So we know that we're not either overheating or underheating the baby. The installation. Before you put out the battery tab, I would recommend you do a couple of things. Well, first of all, you pick the room that you want to put it in. Secondly, you go to the radiator and you figure out that if you need an adapter or not. Luckily, I didn't. So I just had to unscrew my previous TRV put it aside, get the new one, put it in, and then screw it back in very simply, just gently by hand, and you have a little bit of a tight grip. At that point, pull that battery tab open and the device will boot up. You'll see a sort of number appearing on top. At that point, it's ready for calibration. Before you actually calibrate it, you can actually sort of move it so it actually fits centrally, so you can actually see it nice and straight. So once you've moved it, then give it another little bit of a tight underneath. At this stage, we're ready for calibration. Hard press on top of the TRV, press it down for around set three seconds, and then it should auto calibrate and you will hear some noise. Zzz, those are like the motors that are moving. Now at this point, the TRV is actually fully functional. You can change the temperature by just sliding, moving them up and down, and you can do a gentle tap to see some of the settings. Now, if you're getting value in this video, remember to like this video. Now, let's talk about the installation in terms of a software point of view. You'll find some timestamps down below, so you can sort of skip to the relevant part of the video. So I'm gonna talk about the Akara Hub and HomeKit part first, and I'll talk about Home Assistant. But if you're not interested, you just skip around. Let's look at the Akara setup first. First thing, ensure that you have your Akara Hub turned on. Secondly, go to the app, tap on the plus button, scroll down until you see air treatment. So that confused me a little bit. I couldn't really find it at the beginning. So under air treatment, you'll find the uh, TRV. So tap on it. At this point, you're ready to do the pairing. So go to your device and hold it down for 10 seconds until you see a green light flashing. I got an audio uh, response back from my device. The first time I tried it, it didn't work. The reason was because I need to upgrade the version of my app and then I also upgraded the firmware of the G2H Pro itself, because obviously this is a new device and it was released after that. And to be honest, I never really updated the firmware of that device previously, so that's really a bit on me. But anyway, once you've got everything upgraded and installed, 
then the installation pro process is smooth and it works really well. And you get an audio response back from the device telling you that there is being paired and it's all successful. Then if you go back onto the uh, home screen in a Kara app, you can actually see it and you can see all the settings there. You can control various things. Now I'm using this in HomeKit enabled mode. What it actually means is I haven't got an account or a login with Akara. So I'm quite particular in terms of the email addresses that I share and I try not to create too many accounts because of all the smart devices that I have around the house. My preference is using HomeKit mode which limits what you can actually do in the app but also makes it super convenient because it only means that it syncs directly into HomeKit. I'm a HomeKit user also and I can get access to there and easily control everything. Let's jump into the Home Assistant method. You're going to need to have a Zigbee controller. I'm using the uh, Combi 2 stick and I've also got ZHA. I have, I have several other videos on the channel explaining how this actually works. So I'm assuming you're sort of familiar with this process and as normal you just go add device then you will tap for 10 seconds you'll get the green light flashing and you can pair it up. Uh, really uh, pay attention to the name that you give to the device and the entity so it's sort of named uh, accordingly. So this is all done but what about if you want to put it from Home Assistant into HomeKit? Well I've done that, I've got a configuration file so I've gone to the configuration.yaml and I've gone into the included entities list as you can see here on the screen and I added in the new entity that I created uh, and then I actually saved it. Now at this point you can see me trying to test it out so I'm showing you uh, both in, uh, in the HomeKit app, one of them was the one that I paired that through Home Assistant, the other one is through Akara, and you can see that both of them are quite responsive uh, and they're working quite fine. You can also see in the Home Assistant the actual uh, delay. So if you turn the dial, you can see Home Assistant Im immediately picks up the update, but if you update it from Home Assistant, so you change like the um, target temperature, for example, you don't actually see a change. It's, it actually is changing, because it's not a physical move of the dial, the light doesn't pop up. So if you actually tap on it quite quickly, or while it's already tapped and the light's open, when you see it moving around, you should actually pick up that it's uh, responding quite quickly. The next step now is to automate this in detail. If you want to find out more about this, a video is going to drop right here. In the meantime, you can watch the latest video from Smart Home Makers. If you enjoyed this, remember to like and subscribe, and see you in the next one. Ciao.